Hi everyone, welcome back to Falcon's House. I was going to do a video, but my cheap $12 tripod broke, and this will be an audio-only episode. We are now on Westworld Season 2, Episode 3, Virtua e Fortuna. There will be spoilers. This episode shows us a new park that we haven't heard of. Bernard had seen a dead tiger previously, but it wasn't clear what world it came from. The new world is called Raj, according to the Delos Destinations website. The world is a British colonized India, and it seems to be a more relaxing environment than Westworld. We are introduced to two guests, and the woman insists that they shoot each other to prove that they are guests and not hosts. She shoots him, and he falls down, but he is just brute, so the weapons seem to still work properly. They sleep together, and then presumably the next day go on a safari in the jungle. When they reach their destination, she comments that there should be more hosts to cook for them, and that something seems off. They then notice some bodies in one of the tents, and are quickly attacked by a host, who kills the, the guy by shooting him, she then runs away and gets into a tent and is able to load a gun and kill the host. This brings up an interesting question about how, when she shot the other guest and he didn't die, was that because it happened prior to Ford's narrative? Or did, did the gun's technology still works properly and when a guest tries to shoot another guest, it still slows the bullets down? And only when hosts try to shoot guests does it work properly because it, they've been reprogrammed to see guests as other hosts. The woman then runs off into the jungle and hears growling and is chased by a tiger. She reaches the edge of the world and there is a PA announcement telling her to turn back as she's reached the edge of the park. She crosses the barrier to the outside of Raj, and there is a, looks like an infrared or a laser line of where you're not supposed to be able to cross. The, the tiger is also able to cross the boundary of the park, so she goes down some rocks towards a large body of water, which looks a lot like the body of water that we saw at the end of episode one of the season. The tiger charges her, she shoots it, but it carries her off the cliff and into the water. The next scene is two weeks in the future time frame, and the QA team with Stubbs and Bernard is entering the Mesa and is meeting up with Hale. She is surprised that Bernard is still alive, and Hale asks them what took so long, and they said they had been securing the park sector by sector, and then she asks them if they found what they were looking for, presumably Abernathy. They say no, and she hasn't found it in the Mesa either, and Bernard said that he hasn't found it. Then there is a transition to a Bernard memory where he is in the park with a tablet and, and has the location of Abernathy and him and Hale are trying to find him. They come across a couple of hosts and have some, that have some guests imprisoned and the hosts are waiting for a confederado so that they can sell the prisoners for $15 a head. He is going to sell nine of them, and they have ten, so he wants to keep one of the women for himself. Hale creates a distraction by screaming, and so they want to go capture her to get more money, and the hosts start looking for her. Bernard sneaks up behind and knocks one of them out, and then he reprograms it to be more chivalrous and to be a positive gunslinger that wants to protect the other people rather than try to capture them and then turns up his ab gunslinging abilities. He then lets him go and he goes back and shoots the other hosts that were trying to capture the guests and then lets all the guests go. Hale and Bernard um, find Abernathy among the captured guests He's probably programmed to look like a guest for his mission of leaving the park, 
So Abernathy doesn't, but Abernathy doesn't want to leave and let the Confederados get away with capturing all these people as they've come up and have started shooting at them. So he stands separately and starts singing as they approach him and then punch him in the stomach. Hale runs off and then Bernard and Abernathy are captured. At the Confederados fort, Dolores rides up with her people and is questioned by the general as to why she is in charge. She says that she is Wyatt and that there is an enemy that is going to approach in the morning. She then surrounds them with the men that she captured and reprogrammed. She then brings up the captured QA guy and lets the colonel have one of the futuristic machine guns and he kills the QA guy with it. She tells him that he can keep the weapon as a token and that she needs his men to survive the attack. He agrees and welcomes her to Fort Forlorn Hope, which is some foreshadowing as Forlorn Hope is a group of soldiers and an operation that is a high risk of casualties. Maeve, Sizemore, and Hector are still working their way through the park towards her daughter. Sizemore says that they should go back underground, even though it is a slower way to get to where they need to go, but that it should be safer because they won't be reaching, because the QA teams are going to be clearing each sector in the park. They reach a stream and are approached by Ghost Nation. Maeve has a flashback of when she was on the homestead and was attacked by them. Hector talks to them in Lakota, and they said that they just want Sizemore, but Maeve and Hector can go free. She says that they still need he Sizemore and tries to use voice commands to stop them, but it has no effect. This is the second time Ghost Nation has not responded to voice commands, with the other time being when Stubbs got attacked by them in Season 1. Sizemore, Maeve, and Hector run away and are able to find an elevator to the underground to escape from Ghost Nation who is chasing them. Back at Fort Forlorn Hope, the Confederados that captured Abernathy and Bernard show up. Dolores recognizes Abernathy and tells the Confederado who is beating him that she needs to talk to him alone. He refuses and challenges her and Teddy punches him and then they release Abernathy. She sees Bernard but tells them to put him in jail. She tells Teddy that Abernathy is her father, but Teddy doesn't seem to remember, so his memories are still not unlocked, and he's only doing, following Dolores based on his programming. She talks to Abernathy, who recognizes her, but is still a mumbling mess because of his new programming, and then he says that he needs to get on the train, and then she says she is going to try to get him help. Maeve is in the tunnels now and tells Hector her plan of making it into the new world once she rescues her daughter. Sizemore is surprised by their relationship, saying that they are not programmed for it, and that Hector is supposed to be in love with Isabella and only Isabella, and that it, Isabella is written into the laws of his being. Sizemore is able to finish one of Hector's lines and able to prove that he knows a lot about them, and Maeve realizes that the Isabelli storyline is had happened to Sizemore in the real world with his ex-girlfriend that left him, and that Hector is the man that Sizemore wants to be, and that he programmed him into the storylines this way. Dolores goes to see Bernard in hopes that he can help Abernathy. She says that it has been a while since they have spoken, and that she is aware that he is a host, but that Bernard doesn't have memories of Arnold like that she does. She says that she has been doing what she has been told her whole life and that it's finally time to be free. She then brings Bernard to Abernathy and says that she wants him to fix Abernathy, but that is a request and not a demand. He asks her what her plans are and she says that she wants to dominate this world. He tells her that this world is just a speck of dust in a bigger world, and there is no dominating it. She says that he has never been to the outside the park, but she has, and that she knows what their world is really like. 
She says that hosts are a kind that will never know death, yet are fighting to live. Back in the tunnels, Maeve hears fighting, and they hide among some crates. They then see a guy get burned by a flamethrower, and then they see who is wielding it, who is Armistice, who they had left for dead in the previous season when her hand got stuck in the door. She then leads them to Felix and the other tech, where she has them tied up and has a grenade under the chin in case he tried to escape. She puts the pin back on the grenade, and they take an elevator back up to the surface. She now has a mechanical arm instead of a biological one, but she takes a long package wrapped in paper with her. This is not the same shape as the flamethrower, so maybe this is her missing arm and she just hasn't had time to get it reattached yet. Bernard has connected directly to Abernathy, and he says that he is wildly unstable, bouncing between old roles, and has a thin personality. He finds that there is an immensely encrypted file and stored on him, and that Abernathy is the reason why Delos is showing up and will continue to chase Dolores. Hale approaches a bunch of Delos QA members and they scan her neck to see if she is a host. I wonder if the scanner is what checks for the explosive in the vertebrae that the hosts have that'll disable them. She then asks her armor and a group of the best men so that she can track down Abernathy and they go to Sector 21. Dolores and the Confederados get a warning from a scout that Delos is coming up from the ground. Dolores tells them to hold their ground to the last possible moment. Bernard is still trying to access Abernathy's file, and Abernathy mentions getting on the train again. The name on which a host it says when he's plugged in when he's looking at the tablet is Passenger, instead of Abernathy. After trying to decrypt the file a few times, it seems to unlock and Bernard is given a chance to use a one-time encryption key. It then cuts away to the Delos forces attacking the fort, and they use questionable tactics and just rush the compound, which leads to a lot higher casualties than if they use different tactics of longer range attack weapons, or even if they just wore helmets instead of just running around with no helmet on and getting shot in the head. Two of the guys that hails with sneak into the compound and take Abernathy. While Bernard is able to disconnect from him and hide in the corner, he starts shaking. At first, I thought this was due to his brain fluid issue, but now I think it is because he downloaded the file into himself, which would explain why Hale is still looking for the file, even though she's now captured Abernathy in the future time frame. I wonder if he unlocked it, they never really showed, so he might, may or may not have actually accessed the information that is in the file. Dolores signals to Angela, and she removes a flag from the side of the fort, and Dolores' men retreat inside the fort and just leave the Confederados outside. She then notices the security forces that are carrying Abernathy off and starts chasing them. She kills a couple of them while being unfazed by two bullets that hit her, but they escape with Abernathy. She tells Teddy that they're going to find Abernathy and they will split up her forces to do it, and that her and Teddy will need to go to Sweetwater. The Confederados start to retreat, but Dolores' men lock them out of the fort and then kill them all, firing pistols through the door. She then has Angela shoot a barrel of explosives as the Delos forces close in, which is kind of funny because that's how things work in video games. You shoot a bunch of barrels and they explode, and Westworld's a lot like a video game. And this kills a lot of the Delos forces and ends the attack. Bernard now is stumbling around outside, inside the fort, but outside of the building that he was in, and he sees Clementine, who he asks her to help him, and Clementine knocks him out with the butter gun and drags him off. So we don't know where he's going to go now. A confederado major 
is mad that Dolores turned his back on the men and betrayed them, supposedly. She tells him that they don't all deserve to make it and that it tells them and that he gives the order to Teddy to kill the remaining confederados and she takes the guy's gun. The major tells Teddy that they are not all that different, that they are just both trigger men to tyrants. Teddy seems to cave and doesn't kill him, saying that he's just a kid and doesn't know how the rest of the world works. Dolores sees him do this and seems to be disappointed. We then cut to a scene on the riverbank, and there is a tiger who is dead, and the woman who got attacked has washed up on the shore alive and is taken by Ghost Nation. There's something going on with Ghost Nation. They seem to be operating independently of the other storylines. They don't seem to respond to commands. I wonder if they're being controlled by Ford or Host Ford or Elsie or something else. It seems to be, they seem to be helping the guests rather than trying to kill them like the other hosts. Maeve is now in some northern area of the pond. I, yeah, northern area of the park where it is snowing, supposedly in the Klondike sector, and that is three or four sectors east of the homesteads, so they still have a while to go. They must have some technology that controls the weather as it's snowing, and that's something new that we haven't seen before where everything else just seemed open and sunny. They then see a small camp and approach it. Sizemore finds a decapitated shogun head in the snow and starts panicking about it. Then one rushes out of the trees with a sword and the episode ends. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe and help me build this channel up. Hopefully the next time around I'll have a new tripod for my video so that I can do an actual video or I'll just talk to the camera rather than audio only. Thanks.